All right, we are live on the Bagland podcast. We got Brother Solomon here. Um, if you press for time, brother, just let us know, and you know we'll we'll try to keep it a little shorter. Um, so, you know, we we have new developments. I was supposed to do an episode probably you know earlier a couple couple days. I had some other things that I had to kind of get out the way, and you have a new prediction with the direction on the way that. Teflon down a Hurricane Harris is going. Well, shit, Kamala's really gaining a lot of traction, man. So you think she's going to put up a good fight? Yeah, I think she's definitely going to put up a better fight than Joe. And I think she rejuvenated the Democratic Party. Now, they, you've had 40,000 confused and lost Negroes, they say. And I don't know about that, but they said that they done got her some millions within hours. Now, let me ask you this question here. Now, you've had a lot of black folks support, you know, oh, we got to get Trump out of office and the boogeyman. We're terrified and all that. Now, was that surprising to you that she was able to get that kind of money? Whereas all the millions of dollars probably could have went somewhere in the black community. Did that surprise you at all? No, it didn't surprise me because um, there's a newfound hope once, once uh, you know, a lot of people were grateful to get Joe Biden out of there because there's a lot of people that have their money invested right. in the Democratic Party. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not just giving her money. This is, I'm going to give you money and I need you to win. And when you win, I need you to do this for me. So once once Biden dropped out and then dropped out in a respectful manner, that kind of changed everything. That took everything from um, well, now we have a chance. Now you Clooney know, so Clooney said no at first, but then once he seen Harris, he said, "Okay, well I'll put my money back in there." Well, yeah, at first he said no. He wanted to see what they talk about, you know. George Clooney's big, you know he. He wants, he wants, he, these, these Democrats, they want to win. And then they understand this, that, you know, Trump was talking about a dictatorship and all this and that. Let the Republican Party win the House, the Senate, and the election. <laughs> it's going to be real. Now, you know what I mean? it's going to be real. If you notice this new rhetoric, and it reminds me of now, you know, you you know how my thoughts have always been a Jim Crow Joe. Never been a fan. Now, my th- my thoughts is if 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 Kamala gets in, she's gonna be worse than Joe and Trump combined. Now, here's the thing. What I'm th- what I'm finding interesting is, do you remember when Joe said you ain't black? Yeah. I'm starting to hear the same rhetoric, but it's not coming from Joe now. I've noticed the Democrats have started to sound like the Republicans this time. Now they're telling black folks, well, if you don't vote for Harris, you ain't black. What what is that all about? What that's about is they're trying to trying to touch on the on black, you know, like this is what blacks are doing. So if you ain't, you know, trying to basically touch your your coon cards, because all motherfuckers don't want to be labeled as a coon, right? <laughs> that's basically, basically what what, especially if you're not one. Basically, what the Democrats are trying to tell you is if you don't vote for us, you're a coon. So before it was you ain't black. Then now that's, it's when black meant that when Biden said that when he said that to Charlemagne, he could have said that right there. He could have said if you don't vote for me, you a coon. So that's a dog whistle. You're you're a tap dancing sellout nigga if you don't vote for me. Exactly. Now he 100%. didn't say what he was gonna that's do. Exactly what that means. Now he didn't say what he was gonna do. They asked, you remember years ago they asked for and, and you know we, we got a new policy unless we have something new that we brought up. We're not gonna do a lot of discussion about reparations without a plan mm-hmm. or boots on the ground. So I'm gonna honor that. Now he said before they asked him about reparations and he said. When they ask him, well, what do you think about reparations? And he went immediately to start talking about immigrants. He said, well, immigrants are hard fighting. They, they work like hell. He completely ignored the question about black folks getting reparations. 
they the, those people he answered it he answered it without you thinking he answered it you know how he answered that okay so when people come here from africa they're labeled african-american right so all the money that's invested in these people bringing them here getting them this getting them that that's under the umbrella of we're hooking up blacks oh okay so he he so he so the the, the bait and so switch that, so bait and switch but what he's telling you is the money we've been invested in these immigrants that's a part of reparations that's his slick slick way of saying that so i'm gonna give these folks repar. this is their reparations you're no, rep he's, not, he, he, he's not dividing the two all y'all are black and i'm hooking up black oh if you go here to the sewer neighborhood then you see all these low-income housing that all got somali people living there right right guess what that's that's black that's african-american so when they say crime oh black on black crime you negroes over there that that's if yeah, they commit well, all the crime they'll say you're black yeah well i mean uh foundational blacks are doing enough of that they don't need any help but when it comes to low-income housing benefits for people all these benefits you see somali people getting you might as well say blacks are getting it so when it comes to reparations and this and that they can go to that lump sum of money that they're passing out there it is right there look what we're doing that's what biden said look what we're doing oh okay so, so in your brain you're thinking you're you're seeing that there's a divide which there is when it comes to that but in the eyes of white america white society legislators they put they'll they'll box somalians in or africans in with blacks hook up africans with the benefits that blacks should be getting boom and then once it comes down to somebody arguing they say look we're hooking up blacks what you talking about so so now so blacks have to get off of that that when you when they check the box of what you are there needs to be a box that says i'm from africa mm, i've there heard people say that. that says i'm american i am a foundational black american so when you so then when you divide up the money you, the money is divided up differently you can't just put they if, if there's let's just say for argument's sake there's five million in a pot for african americans four million of it is going to somalians one million maybe going to foundational. That makes Think sense. Think of that. Did, 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 yeah, so that's yeah. their way. That's their way of shutting up people and <laughs> and reaching a quota without actually helping Black Americans. Because now your viewers are going to say, "Why? Why would they do all this to not help a Black American?" Fear. I remember when the white, uh, man, the white man has the fear of the black American, the foundational black American. The fear comes from if the foundational black man is financially stable, he's going to come attack us. Mm, mm. Now he's going to hurt. He's going to beat us up, and he's going to have power. We're already afraid that I'm talking to you through the eyes of a white man. We're already afraid of the black man this off gp afraid now put some money in his pocket and power no nah, we ain't doing that we can't do that no, we no, that's no. basically that's the american way of life for us that that's that's a wrap yeah. now so if we hook up these africans let them live 50 million deep in an uh an apartment all stacking their money then buying houses and cars and this and that let's let's let them do that now we can we can ease our so when that conversation comes to what you're saying to biden he can say that look at all the money we're spending on bringing people from africa here and helping them out and this and that and the benefits they get as soon as they get here i had a somali homie think, that said the same thing uh, he, but why do you think somalians so when you come to america from a refugee camp you don't get to pick where you go right you see what I'm saying? You don't just say, yeah, yeah let me get to California. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, you, they pick it for you. But what happens after that is you can d move around. As soon as you get to where you go, you can just go anywhere you want. You know, a lot of people pick Minnesota when they get here, when they get to America. They pick Minnesota because it fits the, the, the Somali way of life. 
and they're able to, you know, do things. So if you got, they can have four or five wives. You can put all of them on government assistance. Oh man. All of them on, I know a guy that does that. He's got four wives, all of them are on low income housing. All of them got government assistance. They all live in one building. Low income housing, they all get a check, a disability check. Hell, the kids even get a disability That's check. That's like pimping. He's pimping no the system. System. Man, that man might have 15 kids. Holy shit. 15, 20 kids, man. He's probably in his mid 50s, early 50s. He, he probably got 15 kids. I've never all, met a black man. All that money. I've never all met a black man that can do that. Him. I've never met a black you know, man that did that. that. Here's the thing is it wouldn't be allowed. So if Muhammad rents an apartment and Muhammad's got about eight people living in a two bedroom, no one's gonna question them. Lil Kuki got eight people living with him, they're they're banging on him. They're gonna shut him down, you know? That and they look at the Mexicans, they do the same thing. Think right now, if you were like if you could at one point in your life, if you're in your listeners, you could live with your close friends. It wouldn't charge you any rent. You could stack all your money from your job, and in a year you could buy a house. I'd have two hundred. Yeah. I'd have two hundred thousand dollars in two years, bro. Right. Well, that's, why do you think Somali's got nice cars, nice mm. this and wow? Think about it. So after the George Bush economy recession, no credit became good credit. So you got you take that into account, and then you take into account you're able to just stack. And even if you're in a situation where you got to pay rent, you might have five, six, seven people in a low income housing apartment. That's one hundred and fifty dollars because the person, the mom or the grandma that the apartment is his name under, she gets seven oh three. So one third of that is rent. So it's a hustle. But the black man now go to Harbor Light. If you know what that is. There's a homeless homeless shelter. Okay. Go to uh, Catholic charity. You'll see nothing but foundational, nothing but Americans. Yeah, you might see for every for every twenty five Americans you'll see you'll see one Somali. Damn man. And that's in the homeless shelter. Why didn't they, they mention that? Why didn't they? They can't get houses. Why, why didn't they mention that? All Ooh. these all. What I'm saying is all these Negroes that that donated to Kamala didn't that they did not ask her for any change of policy. They didn't ask her for anything. Why aren't they bringing that up when they were on that damn Zoom call? It's not about it's a popularity vote. It's no different than in high school when they vote for homecoming king and queen or so collard greens, hot sauce. Oh, look at my degree. Is that what it, Oh, the NAACP. Oh, we're so uppity. Is, is this a bunch of uppity collard green? Uh, I just want to be seen as Negroes, sister girl. All, is that what that all is all about? It's like Killer Mike said, vote for the policy. The policy. Not, yeah, not the person running. Okay. So if you take that, what he said, and you kind of alter it into t- today's society, what you're seeing is people not necessarily voting for policy but voting for who they think sounds the best that's identity politics that's insane that's that's yeah, plantation that's, that's plantation picking any politics is what i call it there's nothing when you watch this next debate in september with kamala harris and donald trump when it comes to the actual policies you and me can tell you what they're going to say Mm. Democrats feel this way. Republican Donald Trump might deviate from the Republican Democrat script, but Kamala's not. Whatever framework the Democratic Party has been built on all these years is exactly what's going to come out of her mouth. Obama 2.0, basically. Exactly. That and that's what their idea is with her. So that's when you see the marketing and what just look at Obama 2.0, and that's what everybody sees. Oh. I'm, I'm a part of change. <laughs> when I go to <laughs> when I go to the polls, I'm gonna vote, and I, I made a difference. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> then I'm gonna go tell other people, and now I'm important. That's all it is. It's just a popularity contest. <laughs> <laughs> so you end up with a nigga like this. Okay, now I, I gotta. I play this all the time. I gotta remind niggas. 
I gotta remind niggas this right here. I know who I am. First of all, I'm Roland Martin. I'm a man. Okay. I'm a man. Do you first. identify as a black man? Oh, first of all, I identify as a man. Now, you, you heard him ask that question. I want to play it one more time. I know who I am. First of all, I'm Roland Martin. I'm a man. Okay. I'm a man. Do you first. identify as a black man? Oh, first of all, I identify as a man. Okay. Why didn't he say, yes, I'm a black man? Why did he keep dodging that question? Well, I mean, what was the, what was the context of that prior they, to that? They were talking the about... Uh, Basically, Richard Spencer was pretty much telling him, hey, look, I'm a white nationalist, a.k.a. I'm a, I'm a race soldier. I want white privilege and I want more. He Roland started talking about religion and all this, and he, he, he tried to pivot and ask Richard, was he a Christian and this, that, and the third. And so then he asked the man, are, are you a black man? And he he wouldn't say it he was just talking about well i'm a man first and all that i mean you know the average black man gonna be like yeah i'm, I'm, I'm a black man you're gonna be proud to say you're a black man but he he really didn't want to he really didn't want to um really say it and he might have been saying like i'm a person of god first or i don't know i mean rolling Rowan is a long person to be talking to them kind of people, you know? Yeah, but see, he you got to think, this 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 dude was one of the most... You remember, he was like in control of the alt-right and stuff. Here you have a stone-cold white supremacist saying, hey, I'm white and I say so. I want more white privilege. I'm standing hard on my white supremacy. Now, how about you? Are you a strong stand-up black man? Now, he couldn't have had Malcolm X or something like that. Malcolm would have told him, like, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm a black man. I'm a revolutionary, you know? He kind of folded. So a lot of people started looking at him real sideways about that. Like, damn, you didn't even stand up. He was looking all scared and like he didn't really want to. He didn't want to stand on being a brother. He did not want to stand on being a brother. And you know what? He don't speak for hate, Haiti either. He has a Haitian background. He never speaks up for Haiti. So I just want to kind of I just want to remind Ooh, the listeners. About black yeah, he's I mean, talking about Haitian issues. He probably wouldn't have much of a show. I don't know because he 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 his his his, his idea he he stomps for immigrants a lot. He basically was telling black folks years ago we need to have more immigrants to override y'all and all this kind of stuff. He was talking like that. So when you get when you get one of the one of the more powerful uh, white nationalist arch nemesis up there, when you got your enemy in front of you, you're supposed to stand on your your toes. And so that that turned a lot of folks off. They were like, damn, this nigga's acting scared in front of this dude or something like that. So now I'm going to play something for you. Now, this is interesting. Now, I want let's put this in context, because, see, what a lot of black folks figure is, well, you know, I don't want to vote for Joe. So let's go over here to the red team. That's not a strategy. Well, I want to vote against this person. That's not a political strategy. That doesn't make sense. When you go to buy a Burger King, go when you go buy a Whopper, you're not going to buy a Whopper because you don't like McDonald's. Oh man, f McDonald's! I'm going to get a Whopper, like like a toddler. You, you when you go to buy a Whopper, bro, you're going to Burger King because you really want a Whopper. You're paying for yeah. something. You know, you're making a transaction. I'm going to pay you three hundred three dollars and fifty cents. So I can get the food that I want. I wanted the Whopper. It's it's flame broiled. You didn't go buy the Whopper because you got a personal grudge against McDonald's. That's how yeah. most black the black the most black folks is that is voting for Harris is going for the boogeyman tactics or oh I'm just gonna vote for him because I don't like him. That's not strategy. So now what they went and did is they went and got. One 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 sister that used to be a Democrat, now she's she done flipped. She's like, okay, I'm sick of these folks. And then they got this one chick. And I think, okay, I think they went and got her. The Republicans went and got her. They had her speaking at Trump's inauguration. Or not inauguration, but they had him speaking at his at, at, at the last uh convention primary, and she was going off and I think something happened to one of her ch children and, and the Republicans said, oh, we need law and order. Oh, let's get tough on crime. Oh, crime, 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 all this crime. So they went and got the token black person to say, well, let's use the talking points. They didn't want to go get Candace. So they went and got her. And I want you to hear what they said. Last few years, 
have left their old party and are now voting for Trump. Latina Brown and Madeline Brame. Madeline, um, good to see you. We'll start with you. You know, she's been vice president for almost four years. Yeah. Obama was president for eight years as a, as a black man. Uh, so is playing the race card here really a smart strategy? And now, now think about this. They done went and got two Negroes and started asking them about playing the race card. You know, uh, thank yeah. you so much, Laura, for having me once again on your show. Um, it is absolutely the most silliest thing that they could possibly do because uh, most African-Americans know that the legal's benefit card is worth more than and she, and she looks like she's kind of reading off of something, but I'm just going to let her keep talking and then we'll analyze it after this five minute uh, audio thing. Our worthless black card. So why would we care about who Kamala Harris is, about her race or her gender? We care about the policies that she has pushed with Joe Biden. Now this is Madeline Brame. She's a former Democrat, Democrat turned Trump voter. And the, and, and the headline here is Dems say, if you don't support Kamala, you're racist. So, so I'm gonna let her keep talking. Past three and a half years, we are struggling. We can't even make ends meet. You talked about retirement earlier. I have to work till I'm 70 years old. Now, that right there, that's a big issue. That, that right there is a big issue. They're like, okay, she's like, hey, I gotta, I can't, I, I gotta keep on working till I'm 70 years old. In order to get my full retirement. So, you know, um, no, black America is not supporting Kamala Harris, all right? Um, her color has nothing to do with the failed policies that she has um, championed and stood on for three and a half years. Now, people have called Kamala the DEI candidate, um, but Democrats, they don't like that. Whenever you hear DEI, I want you to think about the N-word. I want you to think about racial slurs. That's what they actually mean. Now, just just so you know, now, that Negro that was just talking, uh, when he says you talk about the N-word, you got folks like Elon Musk now talking about the DEI. Now, okay, let me break down DEI for some folks. Diversity and inclusion, that really ain't worked for black folks probably since damn near the 60s. DEI, quote unquote, diversity and inclusion is really just an extension of white women and LGBT that rolled off the 1960s civil rights, the 1964 civil rights bill that was really only for foundational black Americans. It was really only for us because we fought for it and it was really only supposed to be for us. What happened was they said, all right, you Negroes want to vote. Here you go. Okay. Oh, you want to, you want to ride, you want to buy a Cadillac in this suburban white neighborhood. Okay. Oh, you want you a Becky. Here you go. Yeah. We'll give you a couple of jobs here. Give you a little crumbs here. Yeah. You could come in this fine hotel. Don't go to the black hotels no more. That's DEI. DEI is the new affirmative action that was really supposed to be solely for black Americans. So now DEI shifted. Remember, DEI was starting to work for white women. White women come in, get more money than a black woman, get all the grants and all that. And now they're calling DEI out like, wait a minute, this Secret Service woman, she's a DEI hire. Oh, she's not doing a good job. She's a DEI hire. She's DEI. She's diversity and inclusion. We need to get rid of her. She can't do her job. She was hired because she was a DEI. And now you got the whole Secret Service. They looking at them funny like, dude. Y'all was supposed to make sure uh, Donald was straight. That was a horrible job y'all did. Y'all was sloppy. Folks is looking at it like, damn, you tried to backdoor Trump or something like that. Latina, <laughs> when you think, when you hear DEI, think of the N word? That's where they are, that's it? Well, you know, Laura, thank you for having me on. Um, I just wanna say this, the Democrats are full of crap. And I think that they know that the American people can see through the crap that they're pushing and circulating out there to the black community. If anything, the Democrats, they're the ones who are sowing division in the community, in this country. They're not about uniting everyone together. Together, They're about themselves. They're about power. They're about division. They have their own agenda in place. And this thing has been in the works for years. 
It's just that now it's coming to mm. light and people are starting to wake up. They're opening up their eyes. And, and I'm going to tell you something. The black community, we will not support her. Nope. You know, they can try to race bait us. Nope. They can try to push the gender uh, oh, agenda. Yeah. In our and speaking of that, Latinas. Mm -hmm. speak well, the gender. Now, see what what the Democrats do with the gender thing. Oh, the black women. They play that old mammy plantation thing. Oh, you 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 strong and independent black women. You gonna save the day. You gonna get Harris in there. You gonna save democracy. And before years ago, once black men were kind of like, man, I don't know. I want something for my vote. I'm think I'm gonna do couch. I'm gonna sit couch. I'm gonna sit back and just let let the thing, good times roll. Oh, you, 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 you black Negroes. Oh, you're, 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 it's the patriarchy. And it, and you don't want to vote for her because she's a woman and all this, all this, all this old BS. So they tried to de gender divide. That didn't work. Years ago, um, Roland and them was pushing that old, well, we don't need you young black men vote. The old niggas is going to save the day. And that didn't work. You see how that planned out. So now they're trying to shame black men into voting for Harris so you got you got Van Jones he up there crying this nigga's crying and boohooing and carrying on you know what I'm saying so I think they just tell this nigga to cry and he just starts crying every time something happens worse for the Democrats he'll start crying you know and now they're using the they're bringing the sister girl thing back in the collard greens is coming out they got Harris running around buying old records <laughs> you know what I'm saying old it, it, the pandering is just when you see it, you're looking at like, okay, my mom and dad, man, I got, I got those set. You know, my grandma got them same records. It's like, okay, if you buying those records already, you ain't black. They talking about you ain't black if you don't vote. You supposed to been had them records. So if you coming out, Roy, Roy you got to think about who they're targeting. Roy Ayers, that's something that our parents was listening to when they were coming up. Now, me and you, we'll still listen to it, but Roy Ayers and, you know, she was going to get all these, like, not earth, wind, and fire, but, but stuff that our parents would have been listening to when they come up. So, think about that demographic. Who were they targeting when they went to go get those records? The old niggas. The baby boomers. Oh, come out and vote. Don't y'all remember when we used to play these records? Because the Fife Dog and Tupac thing didn't work. Fife Dog and Tupac thing didn't work. They're like, okay, yeah, you don't know nothing about Fife Dog. 20 acres and a mule, that didn't go over well. So, okay, I got to I gotta pull something else out the hat. Now she's back talking about the collard greens, cooking them in the tub. I ain't never met no black person that cooks collard greens in the tub. <laughs> I ain't never met no black person that cooks collard greens in their bathtub, man. So, you know, oh, they're using, she's using everything she could get out the book. That shows her desperation. Let me keep it rolling. Speaking of that, I got a place because they're <laughs> starting this pressure campaign for any black person or minority who is not considering voting for Kamala. Well, You're going to look real crazy being on the other side of that line, particularly yeah. as a person of color. This is Joy Reid talking. This is another bootlick. She's like a Van Jones. She's up here talking about, again, this is the you ain't black angle. But really, as anyone who claims to have any connection to the culture, you're going to look real weird and real lonely on that side. All right, one line from each of you. Madeline, you're going to look really weird, mm -hmm. Madeline, well, if you don't you, support you, her. You know, I'm, I'm not paying her no mind. You know, I'm not supporting... Kamala Harris, because I don't believe in the continued genocide of black babies in the womb through abortion, where she's pushing tooth and nail, even to the third trimester. You know, I don't believe in that. Third trimester, that's some devilish shit. And I don't, I don't support that, and I don't believe that most of the, especially black women in, in the black community, um, support that. Latina, you're weird if you don't support Kamala Harris. You're well, weird. You, well, you know, I think, um, you know, that's a weird statement coming from, um, you know, uh, Miss Reed. I don't think she's all there mentally. God help us <laughs> no. all. Uh, no, let's, let's, let's be nice. <laughs> no disrespect. She's very, nice. Uh, she's very nice to me in the elevator. We sometimes ride the elevator together. And I, she's actually a very, I, we, uh, I said we should do something for charity, like go on the road and do some show for charity. And she said she would. So, I mean, I'll, I'm going to hold that to her, hold her to that. But uh, now you heard what she said. 
nice in the elevator. I want black people to understand something. These folks, a lot of them work in the same offices. God forbid any young black person gets into the criminal justice system. But if, if so, you do know the prosecutor, the judge, um, the public pretender, they all know each other, right? So yeah. what, what, what I want folks to, like you said, this dog and pony show, this Barnum and Bailey circus, they get off these damn channels and they probably be talking to each other like, we don't care about these niggas. We, let's go back to our condo. The left and right, yeah. right bird, the left and right wing of white supremacy. They get on these elevators. Hey, let's go get a charity. Let's go get some money out this nonprofit. These folks, when they get off work, they really don't give a damn about the people. And I just want the young, the younger generation that maybe listen to this program understand that they know each other. They all know each other. Oh, they don't matter what party. They all know each other. They probably be sitting up in some bar after work or something after they get off the news anchor channel and be talking shit. Yeah, man, these niggas really think they're going to do something for us or whatever. They, they don't give a damn because they're bought and paid for. They're bought and paid for. Why you think Why you think Van Jones up there talking about, well, we going to protect black women. Oh, you Negroes, you black men better protect black women. This nigga got a white woman. <laughs> Exactly. This, this nigga got a white woman talking about protect black woman. This, do you think Van Jones would protect anybody? That nigga probably would cry. If some niggas pulled up on him and his wife or some shit, he might start crying. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, here's another thing. You sent this to me. Of course. He crying just on that normal shit. Somebody pull up on him, he really gonna start crying. He might give him the car keys. It might. I don't even think that's a question. You know, yeah, but he you gotta realize he's crying on cue. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know that's just the act. He just he just signed a real fat deal with Amazon. But the hundred million dollars. Yeah, a hundred now, and no one knows why. But uh, the Amazon owner, he, you know, they're of course they're not gonna say anything. We might know years down the line. Amazon. He's the most identifiable black um, political commentator. Oh, so you're saying Amazon got something in with CNN? Hey, we gonna pay this nigga to say this? No, hey. Amazon stole him from CNN. But he's still on CNN. Now his contract ain't started yet. So you're saying that Amaz he's gonna speak for Amazon? He's gonna be the black voice for Amazon. Whenever something happened that he don't like, he's going to start crying, except it's going to be on Amazon now. Okay, so he's going to be the new Jesse Jackson. If there's some racism going on in Amazon, Van Jones going to show up at the headquarters, talk to the Negroes. Hey, man, you know. No. Van Jones is going to sit on the desk at the Amazon studios, and he's going to start crying. But they ain't got no news. So what What, what are they going to use him for? They ain't got news. They're about to start now. So you're saying they're going to have their they own news channel. They signing up everybody. Hmm. They're going to have their own shit. So you could go to Amazon and they'll have a an hour show or something talking about what's going on or same thing that CNN's doing. They just stole Van Jones from CNN. They cut him a fat deal to come cry on their network. <laughs> Well, $100 yeah, hundred million dollars to boohoo. There's something else you played for that you sent me, and I want to play this right here. Let me close out of here. Now you sent me something with Dr. Umar. Yeah. All the Africans murdered who went on international television art. Let me remind you about a year or two ago. Fair in use, YouTube. Fair use art of dialogue. Fair use. That America is not a racist country. You want me to go vote for a so-called black woman? who went on international television and told the world that America is not a racist country. She spit in the face of the family of Trayvon Martin. She spit in the face of the family of Breonna Teller. She spit in the face of the family of Michael Brown, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, Amir Locke, Dante. We can go on and on, Tamir Rice, all the Africans murdered by police which are state sanctioned executions let us be clear the police are agents of the state 
when the police kills a black person that is a state-sponsored execution and in response to all this racism the execution of george floyd this part-time black woman says america <laughs> is not racist and when i say part-time art i'm not poking fun at her because she's being mixed race i want to be clear i'm poking fun at her because she can rarely be found speaking up for black people my issue ain't her being mixed race nobody's responsible for how they come into this world my issue with her is not identifying with her people i remember another interview i saw with kamala harris art and she said somebody asked her what are y'all going to do for black people and she said we can't pass laws just for black people she said this we can't do things just for well kamala harris can i ask you a question madam vice president if y'all if the democratic party can't do anything just for black people why did y'all pass a law only for asians why did y'all pass a law only for native americans why did y'all pass a law only for transgenders why did y'all pass a law only for lgbtqs why did y'all pass a law only for immigrants if you can't do anything just for black people this is what she said it came out of her mouth if you can't do anything just for black people how was it possible for you and president biden to do all these other things for specific ethnic groups in this country from whose benefit no other group can take anything from complete contradiction kamala harris is not for black people but you know what's going to happen i'm gonna tell you why they went that way or if they stay that way they could flip her out but let's say for the sake of conversation, because Joe Biden did pass her his nomination, even though it's not his decision. She has his support, but the party got to choose her in Chicago. But let's say Kamala Harris gets the Democratic Party nomination in Chicago the week of my birthday, August 19th, I believe the DNC begins or the 17th. Anyhow. Here's why they're going to go that way, Art. Why are the Democrats about to give us the first woman president in American history? I'm going to tell you why. In 2022, there were 10 million more women registered to vote than men in America. Now, I'm talking everybody, Art. Black, white, red, yellow, brown, gay, straight, everybody. There were 10 million more women registered to vote than men, even though... There's only I never knew that. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. About three more million women than men in this country. Population wise, there's not a great gender disparity. You only see that when you come to the black community for reasons of extermination, incarceration, okay, uh, uh, miseducation, right? And sexual confusion, right? So outside of black America, the male female gender balance is almost the same. I believe there's 168 million adult women in America and there's about 165 million adult men in America. So you only have a 3 million person discrepancy. Now, those 10 million votes, there's 10 million more women registered to vote than men are. Elections have been decided by votes less than 10 million you've had elections decided by a million you had elections decided by two million you've had elections decided by three million you've had elections decided by seven hundred thousand votes if there's 10 million more women registered to vote than men in america across all race colors and class if we nominate kamala harris as the democratic party's president can she bring us those women votes, those undecided women? Can Kamala Harris bring us all the poor black women, the working class black women, the upper class? Can she bring us the white middle class women? Can she bring us the poor white women? They are banking on our, the fact that there's 10 million more women than men registered. And if we stick Kamala Harris out there for us, can she bring us the greater share of those 10 million female votes? What do you think about that? Can can she bring those 10 million votes he's talking about? Yeah. So you she think can. she could do it? Yeah. Now, you said she's running neck and neck with Trump. Trump and her are really pretty much at the same. I think Trump's beating away. Well, hold on. Let me see here. Six hours ago, 
Yeah. Well, now they say Trump calls Harris a bum. Oh yeah. He said she was. He said she was a bum three weeks ago. She was a bum, a failed vice president. Yeah, he called her a liar. She lied what she did. She did lie. Yeah. Then he said that he said she's a radical left who destroyed San Francisco. You know, I just one of my buddies I was talking to the other day was telling me he just went to San Francisco not too long ago. Man, if you think our homeless problem is a problem, he oh, said it yeah. ain't nothing. Yeah, hey, yeah, that's a whole nother California is a whole nother level of He homeless. said it's a piece of cake. He said he said he he said it even beats out skid row. Oh yeah, he yeah. Said, I mean in the West Coast you're gonna always see more extreme homelessness because you can live outside year round. Oh, okay. Think how, yeah, think of how Minnesota would be. If there was no winner like that, shit. Harris is tied with Trump in Pennsylvania and Michigan. Oh, see, they see that's what he. Harris is gonna have to take Pennsylvania, Michigan, and I told you about Pennsylvania outside of Pittsburgh and Pen, outside of Pittsburgh and uh 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 Philly. That's Alabama. You gotta get the women, the so, women, and then you gotta get that Oprah, that Oprah click. If she gets in with that Oprah click, she's gonna win. She already got the Oprah click. They didn't already been decided. She got Oprah. She got the See? Oprah click. Yeah, that's. If easy. She got that Oprah click, click. That's the Obama thing, right? Because you know that, that's the click, Michelle and all them. That's the click. Yeah, those are the people that's already. You know that money that they they say she put up forty thousand people on the Zoom call that didn't ask her for any about any policy. No. She got that. She already got that. That's what gave her that money because. Remember, a lot of people were pulling out. Once they seen it was Harris, they said, okay, I think Harris could take us to the primaries. Clooney and all them, the big dogs. They said, okay, cool. Now Obama decided to endorse her. So now she got that, she got she got the she got the Obama 2.0 crowd, the oh, oh, we we can <laughs> would you say we can change? <laughs> we, can, we can change. So, uh, we were part of change. Yeah, the party you know, changed. Did. So, I did it. I was a part of getting the first black man in the office. Now, the first black woman. So, now, Boom. now, first woman, first black woman. Obama is going to start showing up in certain places. Well, or, or what he'll probably do, he'll send out Michelle. You know why? Now, me and you, we know. We know better. We're like, oh, hell no. But there's a younger generation that don't know. They don't know. Um, they don't know the Obama like you and I. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they probably, oh, this is a good black family, and they and then they look at Michelle like, okay, she she got black credentials. She's from Chicago. She's a black American. Like, okay, they can. They may not know how you and I know. We we know these niggas full of shit. And they didn't do nothing for black folks, but the young there's a younger generation, there's a new crop of of, of, of of voters that they don't know the economic outlook or how things are probably going to be in the next decade. Like you and I, they're coming fresh out of college, they're coming out of high school, they're they're bright eyed, bushy tails. They're, they're probably like, oh yeah, maybe it could be some change. They don't know <laughs> that these folks plan on nailing the young folks to the cross soon as they get in. They don't know that. They're like, oh, maybe they're good. And they're, they're probably watching videos of Trump and they see all these race soldiers and they see all this, you know, uh, all this white, this overt white supremacist rhetoric. They don't know about about the Democrat hidden white supremacist rhetoric. They don't see that. They just see, oh, we could change and, you know, stuff like that. So well, they did a great job. Democrat, it, was smart. it was smart. They did a very great job, and the best job they did of any any Republican. They did a great job of branding Donald Trump as a racist. Right. Yeah. They did a very outstanding job of that, but they're wondering why aren't we killing in the polls? The reason they're not killing in the polls is that they lost their foundational vote. Yeah. They lost that guaranteed vote. Yep. They don't have and yeah. see what I remember I was telling you the other day. I said, I said, remember, bro, the news, the articles that I'm seeing you on the webpage, that's considered to be ancient Egypt now. 
me i i look at it because you you know i like to read we come from a very reading background where you had to kind of look at websites now when kids and and, and in the younger generation or people in general now they can just pick up the phone they might pick up the black media or like the one you sent me from african diaspora news and you and you look up and i was like i told you bro that social media means something that's the new cnn that's the new fox news now the people that still watch fox news and cnn is old niggas they, they still turn on the tv the young folks people that's under about 40 and under whatever man they they cutting on this this phone the phone is the cnn so they seeing black women all over twitter and social media black america women like man man the hell with errors they seeing that they're seeing hashtag reparations they're seeing this shit is trending bro there's they're getting a lot of black folks is like no i'm good i'm not the, the, you got to think there's a lot of sisters in california they seen what harris did to, to a lot of them sisters sending them to jail and all that over uh what was it uh child care or something like that she sent a lot thousands of black women to jail so folks is pulling all that up and she can't really deny it so you got to go back to the sister girl vote oh roy, roy ayers get these old ass records that most of the young people don't know about so you're gonna try to like you said get the oprah crowd get the obama the week change get the boogeyman crowd oh if you don't vote for her the sky's gonna fall get that old nigga crowd and see if you can you know pander to that they're gonna well, vote because they're afraid be how can you be their thing is this how can you be black and not vote for the first black female that's number one yep yeah, that's the number one because yeah. all real real foundationals don't want anything to do with cooney right you know so let's let's touch that card let's touch that coonery that coonery card because basically the democratic party is telling you if you don't vote democrat and you're black you're a coon and that's why Fox News went and got them two black women that used to be Democrats. They said, oh, yeah. the Democrats are playing the race card. That's racist yeah, to say that. See? Yeah, the thing is, is we all know at a certain point, um, white America invested a lot in this new term that they call conservative blacks, a.k.a. coon. People who don't identify with their race. And then they end up hating their race. So, but the, the amount of money that's being put into these people, you think Candace Owens is putting up her own money for this platform? No. Shapiro and all them had was putting up the money. What about Officer Tatum? Somebody's putting up the money for all that. They're being, people are invested because they realize our point can get across through these coons. Right. If we embrace them because the new hate isn't race, it's ideology. Mm. The new the new the new hate in the world is ideology. It's not even about race. Cause think about it. How many white boys I just met a white dude right now that married a Muslim or a Somali girl. He's a he's a Muslim, he practices Islam. You couldn't tell him nothing. He don't want nothing to do with America. Hmm. He was telling me, don't, don't, back in the day, he used to tell me when my grandma was alive, he used to tell me, don't send your grandma to an American doctor. This is a white dude. Hmm. Who wears the Muslim clothing and everything. There's whites that go to, uh, out to the Middle East and join, uh, Al Shabaab. Have you heard of that? I have heard of that. I have heard of that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, the new race is ide the new racism is ideology. It ain't even about race because coons are being accepted. If I'm now, there was a time where if I was a coon and I was a bunch of whites, they'd use me for my purpose, spit me up and throw me away. Now, whites are investing in coonery. Coons can get our point across for us. And if we promote them in the positions, they can squeeze blacks and we're not even getting in trouble for it. What's the difference if, if you hire a race soldier or if you hire a black that doesn't identify with his race, what's the difference? If you hire no. a race soldier or a black that doesn't no. identify with his race? Yeah, that's the same thing. It, neither one is going to promote black. Mm. The coon, the one who doesn't identify with his race, he's just going to promote people. If he promotes blacks, there's going to be ones that think like him. There was this guy 
Um, and, and remember, I told you, I said, now he may not. The, the, you remember, Trump, Trump picked the VP, Vance, JD Vance. Now, he's not very charismatic, but what I see in him is he's going to lead the GOP. He's the next up. He's the next up. He's going to be the VP, but what I'm saying is he's going to be a young Mitch McConnell. Mark my words, he's going to be the next majority leader of the House. When it comes to leading the, the you know, he's going to have, because remember, he got him, a, he got an immigrant wife, he got an Indian wife, so he'll, he'll be able to say, well, yeah, we're not racist, you see who I got on my arm, she's a people of color. The conservative, the, 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 the GOP is going to have to, they don't like it. They don't like modifying their message or whatever, but they're going to have to make a few changes. They're going to have to make a couple little changes. Now, check this out, because you even have some conservatives that's calling Vance out. Now, listen to this dude. This was on MSNBC, and I don't know if you have read this before, but this is the opinion that they got. Real hillbillies like me don't trust J.D. Vance, and you shouldn't trust him either. In his bestseller memoir, J.D. Vance uses a wide brush to paint Appalachians as lazy, ignorant, and unwilling to try at life. Now, this is basically equivalent to us basically telling Harris, yeah, your folks don't trace back to the plantation. You ain't like us. You something else. You ain't got no black credibility. So this is a hillbilly, likely a conservative, that's like, hey, Vance, you ain't like us. He's giving, he's giving Vance to Kendrick Lamar. He's like, yeah, nigga, you ain't like us. You don't come from where we come from. You ain't no real hillbilly. Now, I watched, um, I went on Netflix and I watched J.D. Vance's movie. Now, years ago, he came out with a book. I think it was a bestseller. I think he was still a senator in Ohio at that time. And it was called Hillbilly Elegy. It's a 2016 memoir by J.D. Vance. It says, and um, you know, I haven't read the book, but he, he came out with a movie on Netflix. And basically, man, the movie was, it was, I'm going to read this article in a minute, but I'm just going to give you just a, a quick synopsis of the movie. The movie was equivalent to a white new Jack City, but they wasn't getting no money. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It was basically, you had these white dudes and they smoking crack and they doing crimes and they just some ghetto trash, white trash. I mean, just the, the equivalent to what they say, oh, well, blacks are ghetto and they live in the ghetto and oh, they're raggedy or whatever. It was 10 times more raggedy than the worst black ghetto. You see what I'm saying? It was hella, ghetto, hella ratchet. And so the hillbilly is saying, yo, don't paint all of, us, all of us out here to be some old meth head fitting all, you know, uh, gun-toting hillbillies. We're not all like that. So they feel a certain way. He's saying, you know, the hillbillies, they really feel a certain way. Like, man, you're painting a, a stereotype of us. So they're not feeling it. So here's the article. It's by Willie Carver. This was released July 17, 2024 at 2.53 p.m. Central Standard Time. Quote, it's easy to understand why Hillbilly Elegy, the 2016 memoir by J.D. Vance, piqued the interest of the American people. It recycles a narrative America has relied on for a century to sleep soundly despite the everyday horrors of our society. That rich people do well because they are morally better than the poor. Add some powerful tropes. A firebrand, pistol-packing lunatic mama who protects at all costs. A rags-to-riches story in which Vance, a Marine, escapes the worst of my cultural inheritance of unsophisticated, drug-addicted, murderous hillbillies, and you've got a, a bestseller. You also got a dangerous lie, one relying on ugly stereotypes that harm real Appalachians in order to advance a political career. Former President Donald Trump announced Monday that Vance, the junior senator from Ohio, is his pick for his running mate. Unlike me, Vance is not an Appalachian. Oh, see, he he pulled the Kamala on him. You ain't even from here. Right. You ain't you ain't familiar. You ain't you ain't from our culture. Kyle, Miss Collie Greens. You ain't from our culture. You don't know nothing about us. He said he was born and raised in Middletown, Ohio, 
well outside any maps of the distinct geographical and cultural region. Now, when I watched the movie, I saw that they say he was born and raised in Middletown, Ohio. Some of his folks was supposed to be from Kentucky, the real Appalachia. Middletown, Ohio, it, I don't know. I don't, I think it's like, I don't know how far it was from, 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 you know, Appalachia, but Middletown, Ohio was considered to be the city. There are certain parts of the movie where you might want to check it out, man, if you got Netflix, but there are certain parts of the movie where they show that he's going back to where his folks grew up. Um, he's coming in from the city. Some of the rednecks that live in Appalachia, they kicking his ass. Oh, you a city boy, you lame as hell. And they, they beating his ass and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, okay, you, you, you this little lame ass city boy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he's, he's maybe spending the summers and stuff like that, you know, uh, with his folks, you know, much like, you know, where, you know, black folks from Chicago, they would go down to Mississippi. That, that had always been a thing. You know what I'm saying? They would go down to Mississippi and they would visit their grandma. They might stay down there the whole summer. You see what I'm saying? So basically they saying like, yeah, you ain't no real hillbilly. So it says Trump picked this rust belt charlatan. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> they call this dude a charlatan as his running mate Monday sparked a resounding and unifying rant among conservative and liberal hillbillies alike in my social feed. We do not acknowledge him. Why would we? Vanch introduces his reader to Appalachia by immediately profiling the worst behaviors of each of his uncles, including a scene of grotesque violence. He calls us a pessimistic bunch living in a hub of misery. And over and over again, he uses a wide brush to paint Appalachians as lazy, ignorant, and unwilling to try at life. There are dozens of offensive stories to choose from when he when hillbilly elegy, perhaps the most ridiculous one occurs when during boot camp, Vance says he meets an Eastern Kentuckian who never having heard the term asks, what's a Catholic? Because as Vance presents it down in that part of Kentucky, everybody's a snake handler. It's an addictively stereotypical image, the ignorant, isolated snake handling hillbilly, but it's not reality. There are a half a dozen churches in that Kentuckian's county seat, county seat, mostly Baptist and Methodist. Just 20 miles away in Hazard, there's a Catholic church. Another 20 miles away where Vance's family live, there's a Catholic church with more than 4,000 Facebook followers. Vance, Vance's memoir of Appalachia, full of gun-toting, drug-addicted lunatics aimlessly awaiting death, is at best a cherry picking of the worst moments of his life. At worst, it's a concoction of real memories and some of television's worst stereotypes of what Appalachia is. I do not see my Appalachia in it. I am not alone. Anthony Harkins and Meredith McCarroll's Appalachian Reckoning, a response to Vance's bestseller, anthologizes more than 400 pages of responses from real Appalachians describing their lives and all the nuance they deserve. But nuanced stories aren't use, useful in uh, politics. Appalachia is simply a rhetorical device for, for Vance that he used to launch a political career. If your political goal is to blame the, the poor for their own problems, then using the regional ethnicity of your grandparents to present yourself as authentic can compel readers to believe your narrative or to feel good about having already believed it. After all, the narrative of the lazy hillbilly has existed for as long as rich folks outside of Appalachia needed an explanation for mountain poverty that doesn't include blaming themselves. Oh, and there's more. He called it the dog whistle is pretty clear. The moral hill folks are already in your area. Trust me, I escaped them. I know the answer to save you. I mean, they go on all and all. This hillbilly does not trust JD Advance, JD Vance. So you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. When JD's out and about, if he ever goes to some of these areas to try to pick up more votes and you know, like, you know, go on rallies and stuff, don't be surprised if some hillbillies pull up on him. Don't be surprised. Somebody might pull up on them on in front of camera and be like, hey nigga, um, we know you don't cook collard greens. You don't know anything about Fife Dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, 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 yeah, these folks ain't playing around. 
These folks ain't playing around. They 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 might pull up on them and say something to them. Cause they're look, what he's doing is equivalent to you know a lot of black folks. They've we we know Harris don't got no real credit street credibility. They're pulling advances credibility already, and they're already throwing it back in his face. Hey man, you used to call Trump Hitler. It's a lot of stuff coming out. But the thing about the but the GOP is they're still sticking together more than the Democrats. Remember, the Democrats was in a frenzy. Now they all got a rally behind Harris. They actually got something they could rally. I was a little skeptical. I was like, okay, Harris is having a real serious issue with street credibility. But I think the black folks, some of the black folks, the goofy niggas, they're they're so terrified of Trump. They're just gonna go with her no matter what. They're just gonna go with her no matter what. And they're terrified of they're terrified of being labeled as a cool internally. Yeah, that's only gonna work for a certain amount of people. They got the Oprah vote. They got the Obama crowd and all that, but folks like me and you, we're not afraid. Well, we're not afraid of it, 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 folks it's, like me or you. But there's a whole lot of people that ain't like me or you. It's a whole lot that ain't, but there's there's more and more, and I'm seeing it because these trending topics ain't no lies. There's more and more to saying. You know what? You not gonna use the boogeyman on me. What you gonna do for me? Or I'm sitting in the couch. So what yeah. the, the first here's the first thing that they're gonna do. This is the first thing that they use. And the Democrats are always this is this is their standard practice. Once black folks start saying, well, wait a minute, man, I don't like her policy. She ain't no she ain't she ain't black, she ain't got no cultural resemblance with us at, at all. We see through it, we see it's fake, we've seen it before, and now it's even faker. We're good. The first thing they're doing is is now they're hitting you with the you ain't black. They pulling Biden's words. Oh, well, you ain't black. You ain't right. you ain't this, you ain't that. We're still saying, well, oh, well, we don't give a fuck. So you can't shame me there. The next thing they hit you with is old oh, Project 2025, the boogeyman, the boogeyman, the boogeyman. You won't have this, you won't have that. This ain't gonna happen. Oh, the, the stars are falling, the devil's coming down, it's gonna be hell, fire, and brimstone. You know, you're gonna have race soldiers coming in and out of your house, and then you have a race soldier down here in Springfield, Illinois shoots the sister in cold blood now right. remember i sent you that screenshot every election season it seems like it's a race soldier ambush like it's some kind of ritualistic killing or something now 